أفلح من صلى على محمد وآل محمد. صلي على محمد وآل محمد. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر وسواس الخناس الذي وسواس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس صدق الله العلي العظيم Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, the sixth Imam of Ahl al-Bayt, was, was born on the 17th of Rabi' al-Awwal in 702 CE in Medina. <laughs> Imam Jafar al-Sadiq is the sixth Imam of Ahl al-Bayt and he was born on the 17th of Rabi' al-Awwal in 702 CE in Medina. Imam Jafar's father is Imam Muhammad al-Baqir and his mother is Imfarao bint al-Qasim. Imam Jafar al sadiq didn't grow up with his parents. He grew up with his grandfather, Imam Zain al-Abidin until he was about the age of 12. But Imam Zain al-Abidin, his main things were worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he just kept thinking about what happened 23 years ago in Karbala with Imam Hussain alayhi salam. When Imam Jafar al-Sadiq started noticing that Imam Zain al-Abidin was griefing a lot, he didn't know about what happened in Karbala, but eventually he put the pieces together and he found out what happened in Karbala. So when he found out what happened in Karbala, he took it to such a point where he felt like he was a part of that tragedy, like he was there when it happened. So from about 713 to 731 CE, not much happened until 731 CE when his father, Imam Muhammad al-Baqir was poisoned by Hisham ibn Abd al-Malk and he, he died that day. And when his father died, somebody knew had to go into the Khalifa. So Imam Jafar al-Sadiq went into the Khalifa. But during Imam Jafar al-Sadiq's time, it wasn't like easy there was there was Abbasin, there was Bani Umayyah and there was Zayd. Zayd was the son of Imam Zayn al Abidin and the Abbasin were just a tribe and the Bani Umayyah were just a tribe. So the Bani Umayyah saw that Zayd was trying to start something. So what did the Bani Umayyah do? They went and killed the father of Zayd, Imam Zayn al Abidin. And when Zayd found out that Imam Zayn al Abidin was killed by Bani Umayyah what did he do? He went and tried to go attack him. When he went and tried to go attack him, what happened? He was killed, and there's a riwayat that say that he was hung on a fence, and yeah, he was hung on a fence, and they kept it there for years just to remind people like this is what happens when you mess with Bani Umayyah. So somebody else who fell into the same loop was his son Yahya. Imam Jafar al-Sadiq tried convincing both of them not to do this because he knew what was going to happen. He knew that if they tried to go after Bani Umayyah, they were going to get killed. His, his son fell into the same loop about a year later. And what happened? His son died as well. And they kept it there so people could realize this is what happens when you mess with Bani Umayyah. And eventually, Bani Umayyah and the Abbasin got into a fight and the Abbasin won. And this is when... The Abbasians before the war, they were all for the Imams and the Prophets being the Khalifa. But after they took down the Bani Umayyah, what did they say? This is our chance to come to power. So they rose to the Khalifa and they didn't want Imam Jafar al to be Khalifa anymore. And they started ruling. Now, everybody found it weird. Like, oh, you guys just want the Imam Jafar al to rule. Why did you guys change right now? And there was a lot of questions. And there was a meeting, and they, there are sources that say Bani Umayyah gave allegiance to Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, which is not really that strong, but there are sources that state that. And in 749 CE, they tried getting at Imam Jafar al-Sadiq a lot, like they tried get, going after him. And this is when Abu Salim, a really strong person who was caught, like he liked Ahl al-Bayt, so he like gave an offer to Imam Jafar al-Sadiq come rule with me 
and this was considered a golden opportunity at the time because Imam Jafar al Sadiq was stuck in a tough spot because there was the Abbasian who were really strong at that point trying to do something. So it, it was considered a golden opportunity. But Imam Jafar al Sadiq said, No, I don't want this opportunity. I got to continue with my mission, which was still spreading. So he continued with his mission. And then came the Abbasian, were not the Khalifas anymore. And who came? The Al Mansur. And there was the original Al Mansur leader died. So who came? Abu Jafar al Mansur. Abu Jafar al Mansur tried talking to Imam Jafar al Sadiq. He called his pe he told his people, call upon Imam Jafar al Sadiq. I want to speak with him. Imam Jafar al Sadiq respectfully said, no, I don't want to speak with him. And he listened to him, the the leader Abu Jafar al Mansur. Eventually, he tried calling him several times, and Imam Jafar al Sadiq didn't want to. So he sent people after Imam Jafar al Sadiq to watch him, and that's what happened. And from 749 CE to 761 CE, they saw Imam Jafar al Sadiq's message was spreading a lot. So what did they think? They thought if it was still going at this rate, pretty much we're gonna be done in a few years. So what did they do? They tried sending Imam Jafar al Sadiq to jail. They successfully sent Imam Jafar al Sadiq to jail. And when they sent him to jail, he st there are sources that say he stayed there for three years, four years. But they thought sending him to jail, what is it going to do? It's going to stop him from spreading the message. And it's going to stop him from, you know, doing his wajbet. But when he went into jail, he continued spreading his message. And he, like, he was still praying and he continued spreading his message, like I just said. And once he got out of jail, it was 765 AD. They say that Abu Mansur gave him some food. And there are sources that state that Imam Jafar al-Sadiq knew about this. But before he went to go eat that food, what did he do? He released a testament. A testament, is, today it's called like a will. Well, he released a will. And he said, the next four Khalifas I want, choose one of them is Abu Mansur, the governor, my son, and Imam Musa al-Qazim. You guys will find out why he did this. But after Imam Jafar al-Sadiq ate that poison grape, he knew it was poison. Before he ate it, he said, La hawla wa la quwata inna billah, and he ate that grape, he knew it was poison. After Imam Jafar al-Sadiq died from eating that grape, what did Al-Mansur do? He said, go find his testimony, and everybody's name who's on that, behead them. So they saw the testimony and who was on it. It was Al Mansur, the governor, the son of Imam Jafar al Sadiq, Abdullah, and Imam Musa al So four people total. And he realized he couldn't behead his own self because, like, he's not going to kill his own self because he was on that list. Imam Jafar al Sadiq was smart. He knew, like, what's his name? Imam, Imam Jafar al Sadiq knew that Al Mansur was going to try to do something. Like, oh, whoever's on there, try killing him. So he was smart and he didn't let him do that. And that was like the life of Imam Jafar al-Sadiq. He opened up houses, he opened up schools for kids. He talked to people about forgiveness. When somebody would talk about bad about Islam, he would correct them and back it up with evidence and prove that what that guy said was a lie. He was good to everybody. He tried helping and there was three tribes against him for about 34 years and he still fought through it, and he was still good. Like, if it was an average person after the first two, three years, they would become bad and they would give in. Imam Jafar al-Sadiq was not like that. Azamallah ajran alaykum bi istishhad al-Imam Jafar al-Sadiq. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.